Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. Now we're looking at the week of October the 4th to the 10th, 2021. We're in the star sign of Libra, but as usual, before we look at the um, individual star signs, we have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead. And before we do this, we have a new moon this week which just so happened to, to be on the 6th and the full energy of that moon um, will be here with us at 12.05 p.m. in the UK. Um, we will all feel the energy already very likely two days prior and will be in that energy probably two days after, if that makes sense. So. While there's nothing too special about that new moon, um, what is important is to realize that when you look at it, energetically speaking, a new moon is basically a new moon or a moon that is not illuminated at all, <laughs> right? So oftentimes, while a new moon also is about new beginnings, it has a downside, which means while new beginnings are in the air, we are not necessarily seeing where exactly we are going, so we cannot play it safe. Um, and that energy of not being able to play it safe, not necessarily knowing what to do, um, might play or might have an influence um, for you this very week. But let's have a look um, what else we, um, we can do and say, say and do. You know, they're not visible. <laughs> anyway, I got them. Um, I always use my animal guides and the decks that I have, uh, if that makes sense. And then the other week, I went to um, my favorite shop, Heavenly Treasures here in Kamak. And um, they had a, a deck which was called the Atlantis card deck by Diana Cooper. And um, I purchased it simply because um, I'm very drawn to Atlantis at this point in time because I started writing material for a new album, you know, electronic music album, and it just so happens that um, I'm currently thinking about um, writing how, from, a, from the point of astronauts, the exploration or the search for Atlantis would sound like. So somehow my mind was in Atlantis, if that makes sense. Um, which to me really feels like a reconnecting to things. And then when this deck showed up, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to have it. So I'm sure that this deck has guides. I just haven't worked with them before. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> so anyway, let's have a look at the overall energy using this very deck. So yeah, let's have a look. So here's what the, what the energy can tell us for the... Um, for the um, for the week ahead, right? And we have clairvoyance and contentment. So remember, just talked about the new moon, which means we might not be able to really figure out come midweek um, where we're going, but we have clairvoyance as the incoming energy and contentment as the outgoing energy. And clairvoyance in that context, context really means for you and for all of us to realize that we are really all psychic. And it's a, it's a weird term because, you know, it gets thrown around a, a lot. But the idea is that um, because you're spiritually awakened and, 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 and spiritually awoke, I think is the, is the term, um, your third eye, the one that helps your intuition, the one that sees things for you that otherwise may be hidden, is fully open. And it's fully working. So what the guides are saying is trust your intuition for all of us. Just trust your intuition. It's really, really important because your, your intuition is what guides you regardless of how you actually um, gauge life. Right. So just trust your intuition, uh, which is very, very important. And then having the outgoing energy of contentment is interesting because what the guides are saying is if you are saying this week, I'm not planning anything, right? I'm not trying to figure out what to do here. I'm not being calculating. I'm not being analytical. Um, I just trust 
and I just go with the flow and trust my gut feeling. And then contentment as the outgoing energy is basically the way of the universe saying to all of us this week, you know, if you can actually trust and if you actually do this, you know, um, you will then very likely feel very, very content in the sense that you kind of feel like, you know what, I didn't overly prepare. I didn't overly think like, okay, what can I do here? Maybe if I do this, then this is going to happen. I wasn't analytical. And yet I'm still here. And this week was actually quite awesome. So I hope this week is going to be quite awesome for us. Um, and the contentment is the outgoing energy basically also tell us when we're going with the flow, while the flow might, might be uneven at times, let's just keep going. Right? So we, there's not much for us in the, in the overall energy, because the overall energy to me is sort of a, a, a preparing, preparing energy, something that is added to the messages for the star sign, if that makes sense, to help us along the way. And clearly there's help given, but mainly the help this week is to realize how deep you, we all are and how deep you are, and that, you know, your intuition is really the compass you need to get through life. Okie dokie, that was that. Actually, they, they, feel, they feel quite good, right? So, yeah, I'm quite happy with the energy that, I, that I'm getting from, from the cards. Obviously, I will not abandon <laughs> my animal guides. Um, but I squared it with them. They're perfectly fine, you know, when I, when I use them here for this week. Here we go. So now we're going to the first star sign for this week. We are in the star sign of Libra, right? So, and we have the high priestess and sound and music. In other words, the, the high priestess is all about wisdom, obviously feminine power. Feminine power is not just directed at females. It is also directed at us blokes <laughs> and at anything really because you know energy is universal and so the idea here is to be in our in the side in our own space where we are compassionate where we really understand and try to understand people's motivations for why they behave a certain way so what Libra is being asked this week is to be understanding and show, show some compassion um, for whatever comes your way, because your outgoing energy here is sound and music. And we are beings of vibration. Music and sound is vibration. So again, you know, do things this week that let your vibrations rise. But ultimately, the idea in sound and music is to actually bring harmony to the listener or harmony to whoever a sound wave or whatever a sound wave hits. Right. So what is also asked of Libras, uh, Librans this week, is to to have a bit of face. Right. If that makes sense. Right. OK. So that was that. For Libra going to the next star sign, which is Scorpio. We're looking at the week of October the 4th to the 10th, 2021. Here we go. So, what we have for Scorpio is what is called the Great Crystal and Relaxation. So, I will not go massively into crystals. I can just tell you that no matter where you look in my house, they're everywhere. So, I... <laughs> Sorry for being so silly. I absolutely believe and can feel, and so can many of you, feel the power of crystals around you. And having the great crystal, which is basically, the, the, okay, this is just, this is where it gets a bit weird because of this terminology. The great crystal is, is basically another term for quartz. And because quartz can actually mimic other crystals, if that makes sense, you know, if you had a, a rose quartz, for instance, or, or any other type of quartz, it can actually help you to be whatever it is you want to be. What that means then for, um, where are we, behind Scorpio, what that means for Scorpio is, is for you to direct, direct your power, 
right? You can adapt to situations, but you also, you know, having crystals, you're being recharged. And therefore, um, it's, it's a pure, what's the word? Crystals connect us to the pure source energy, right? And so while you have the great crystal with you energetically this week, um, you will be quite, it's the wrong term, but it's just the way I hear them. Um, you will be quite powerful. If that makes sense, right? Obviously, there is this saying, you know, to have power is to corrupt it, but that's a choice, right? What that means, you're quite powerful, means that, that this week, if you want to manifest something, Scorpios, that's a perfect week to do it, because this week, you, you direct your power, you direct your energy, you direct your thoughts towards what it is you really, really want to have happen, right? So, um, obviously, for Scorpios, awesome week to manifest, and then when you look at what you want because your outgoing energy here is relaxation what they're saying is don't get into um uh, what's the word don't get into panic simply because you cannot see where your manifestation is going remember i mentioned this earlier we have a new moon um a moon that is that means it is not illuminated at all zero percent illumination how it is seen from Earth, so there are elements this week that may well be hidden and um, therefore cannot be ascertained where things are going. Which means, since you have the quartz crystal with you, just trust. Manifest your thing and don't think, oh, well, I manifested this yesterday, shouldn't I see something today? Right? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. What the guides are asking you is to direct your power, manifest whatever it is you really want to happen. Uh, and then you have relaxation and relaxation really not only means to calm down but also to remember how to breathe because breathing uh, it's also, it's also called the breath of life um, oftentimes so breathing and being mindful of your throat chakra and especially your sternum where rejection sits if you are mindful of all these areas and just relax around um, whatever is happening in your week. Um, you do yourself a great service, right? That was Scorpio going to the next star sign, which is Sagittarius. We're looking at the week of October the 4th to the 10th, 2021. You have, <laughs> there's a lot about crystals here. You have the birth crystals, this, sorry, the, yes, the plural, the birth crystals and blessings. What that really means is that, remember we talked about crystals connecting you to the, to the, to the source energy. And the, 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 every star sign, let's put it this way, every star sign has um, different gemstones that help the energy of your star sign um, to help you with whatever it is you have to figure out um, all throughout life. So your star sign is also governed by the energy of crystals. And what birth crystals mean is that, you know, even if we're not in your star sign right now, you, right, where are we, Sagittarius, you Sagittarians have the energy of the birth crystals of your star sign right with you. I have written down somewhere in my folders uh, because I do astrology reports what the planet what what the the crystals are for the specific uh, um, star signs cannot remember it, remember that cannot remember it so bloody google it yourself <laughs> right ultimately the other advice would be even if you don't want to go like I don't want to google you know what Sagittarians uh, uh, um, crystals are right if you are drawn to crystals that you already have, if you are drawn to getting more crystals, new crystals, now is the time to do it. Because the connection to crystals and the energy and the extra oomph that their energy gives you is super powerful for Sagittarians this week. And then you have blessing as the outgoing energy. Now, <laughs> that does not mean, it's, it sounds a bit weird. Normally when there's blessings, you kind of feel like, oh, that's nice, I'm blessed. Right? Um, when you look at it logically, I think we're all blessed, if, if that makes sense. And in this case, Sagittarians, what they're asking you is to give blessings. 
So this is not a religious thing, right? They're not asking you to walk around with holy water and go to people. Blessings just mean that if you have anything to share that is worthwhile sharing, if you have knowledge inside you, because again, Atlantis is all really about knowledge. Um, so what they're saying to you is if, if you have knowledge to give, which are your blessings to others, um, then share them. So this is probably a good week for, um, for you Sagittarians to, um, if you ever wanted to run a circle, now is the time. If you ever felt like now I'm going to start that book, now is the time, right? That was Sagittarians. You can see me twerking. It's because I'm, I haven't worked with the deck before and I'm just trying to get closer to the energy that I'm feeling when I deal with the energy that comes off the cards. It's just, it's just the thing my body does, so don't don't mind me, <laughs> right? Here we go, and now we're going to the next star sign, which is Capricorn. So, Capricorns, you have the High Priest and Nourishment. It's quite simple. What the, what that means for for all Capricorns is this week to try and be a good leader, right? Be in charge of your affairs, also help others this sounds a bit weird but it's just the way the guides these guides are giving it to me be the light that others could do with this week be a leader both in your life and in the lives of the people you encounter really really important and then ultimately the outgoing energy here is nourishment and um, it's important this week for Capricorns to actually look at what you're eating how is your physical body dealing with the intake of food, right? Is there anything you could probably cut away? Is there anything where you probably feel like, oh, I'm overindulging here, and then sort of go like, mm, is that healthy? So while I'm not getting the feeling that this is all about Capricorns having to change everything and go on a bloody diet, that's not what this is about. But the way your body metabolizes food plays a big role in how, how energetic you are. And that's what they're saying to Capricorn. Pay attention to what you're feeding your body and how the body then has to cope or copes with life. Okay, that was that. That was Capricorn going to the next star sign, which is Aquarius. We're looking at the week of October the 4th to the 10th, 2021. Um, so please, before we, before we go into Aquarius, um, please smash the like button. Please subscribe and please, 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 Share this widely if you like my work. Um, remember, it's a free service. So if you want to support my work, which would help me greatly, you can now um, buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas, which basically means you donate a fiver. I get £4.34 and everybody's happy. Right? Here we go. Um, next star sign is Aquarius. You have <laughs> pools of energy and unicorns. So when you have pools of energy what they're saying to you is this is not the week for you to say like oh i'm feeling i'm feeling crap right if you do feel hmm, weak is the wrong word but if you do feel tired or drained this week what the guides are saying is now is the time to remember that you have pools of energy you just need to find them again so for instance again it's just again new guides um how they work with me at this point in time is they're literally showing me spinach, which is um, a, a super food, if that makes sense. <laughs> and what they're showing me is that it, it, this is, okay. it keeps the eyes healthy, whatever that means, and it is a source of um, iron. So it's just what I'm being given. Don't shoot me. Medium means the guy in the middle. Don't shoot the messenger. All they're saying to Aquarians, it is really, really important if you need help with your energy, you can also therefore ask the cosmic help. Ask your guides to help you overcome your energetical shortcomings this week, right? So all they're saying is it doesn't suit you or serve you this week when you feel like I'm not feeling well, I should take it easy. Even though I don't think you, you, you should be uh, overly um, active, it's just 
pools of energy means that you have a high frequency of energies inside you and all around you that you need to tap into. Really, really important. You need to tap into the source. You need to feel, how do I, Aquarians, how do I feel about this? What does this do to me when someone says something or I encounter a situation? How do I truly feel about it? What does that do to me? And then act on whatever this gut feeling is telling you. Right? So that's the message here for Aquarians. And then the outgoing energy is the unicorn, which is obviously the energy, or the, sorry, the well, energy and the animal that sort of helps with um, maintaining purity, if that makes sense. And what that means to you is, because you have the unicorn by your side, you will not be unethical in any way, shape or form. Um, you will not take advantage of anyone, which is something you already know because you're Aquarius and um, you, you are um, a bit of a, of a giver, if that makes sense. But this is um, therefore, because it's obviously uh, it's about purity, and you only really find purity when you recharge your battery. So a part of you should probably also be um, out and about in nature to recharge your batteries. But remember, when you feel, what does it do to me? And then you speak up, right? It might feel that some people feel rejected or you actually might even let go of, of certain people or certain situations. Don't feel sorry about it. Just trust your intuition because you are connected to purity right and therefore whatever needs to be said whatever you have to say you will say right so that was the messages for aquarius going to the next star sign which is my own star sign um pisces here we go <sighs> i'm exhausted these energies here these guides have a very different pace to the guides i'm normally working with uh, and they're sort of bombarding me here, and I just need to... <laughs> anyway, we're with my own star sign, Pisces. Um, if you are joining me just now, um, I'm using a different deck this week, which is uh, the deck Atlantis Cards by Diana Cooper. And it's the first time I'm dealing with this, and since I'm not... I don't do tarot, if that makes sense. I'm using the energy of the cards. There are guides attached to these cards, and I'm communicating with these guides. Um, so... That's that. So for Pisceans, we actually are super. We have positivity and fifth, fifth, can't pronounce the H, fifth dimension. We are moving towards the fifth dimension. We are all as a collective. I mean, it's not just a collective of humans, by the way. Everything is growing at this point in time, which means that's why everything feels a bit all over the place and why um, you probably don't want to follow old patterns anymore. So that aside, right, what the guides are saying to us Pisceans is this. We have positivity in the fifth dimension, which means this is the week for us. No matter what resistance we find this week, October the 4th to the 10th, don't fight people. Be positive about everything and anything that comes your way. Whatever life throws at you this week, find a positive angle. Even if you tell someone to bloody F off, right? Which is me speaking, not the guides, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just so we're clear. Uh, whenever I put on the, um, on, in, the in, in the description box, moderate use of swear words that's probably because that that's when i personally put some swear words in there where was i yeah so positivity what they're saying to us is um in other words for all uh, all of us pisceans we have to watch our thoughts because when we are really frustrated that's not high energy that's not positive energy so this week all pisceans we are being asked just to be as positive and as uplifting as we can because that will help us rise and raise our vibration um, to get to the so-called fifth dimension, if that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, what that also means, the fifth dimension, is we're moving into an alignment with the universe. We are a part of the universe. We are from the stars. And we're reaching a point of alignment 
um, which makes all of us, especially us Pisceans then this week, um, much more sharp, much sharper, much more, ooh, I get this now, right? But it is important that when you then get things and then you really see, wow, look what they're doing. They're not doing this for the, for the greater good, they're doing this for their own reasons, right? So there, there might be frustration coming in because you're now, um, or we are now, um, looking through things even more. And this is why the guides are saying is we still have to remain positive. It feels like there's this phrase in this, do, do unto others as you would want to be done unto yourself or something along those lines. Anyway, treat people the way you want to be treated. That is in short the message for the fifth dimension energy is to say like, yes, you, you are much sharper this week, but getting overly annoyed about what people are doing doesn't help, right? Just trust that you can deal with it or that we can deal with it. Really, really important. So positivity for us Pisceans, let's try not to be pissed off with situations and people. Just remember we're better than this. That was Pisceans. Going to the next star sign, which is Aries. So we have Aries, Taurus, Gemini and Cancer and Leo and Virgo left quite a bit. I feel this is quite already a longish video. Um, and again, like I said, they're, they're different guides. So um, I probably need a little longer here to, to understand them fully, as you can probably tell, because it's already a longer video. Anyway, that was Pisceans, now going to Aries. Aries, quite interesting. You have excellence and you have recording crystals. What that means is, what you are being asked, and again, overlapping energy. Remember, Pisceans, we were, us Pisceans, we were asked to be positive all the time. Now, in Aries' case, they're asking you to do one better, which means show excellence. Be at your absolute best this week. Be the best person you could ever be. And try to keep it up, if that makes sense. My feeling is for Aries is that there's stuff that needs to be overcome. Um, and so, so past things are coming up for, for Aries. And therefore, the more you are at your highest, the more energetically speaking you are raised and vibrate higher, the easier it is for you to deal with stuff that comes your way, right? So... Try to see things from a higher point of view this week. Um, <laughs> it's just the way you hear it. Attempt to be better. It sounds weird, but again, this is just how, how I hear it. Attempt to be a better version of who you were yesterday. Okay? And then the outgoing energy is recording crystals. So, that just means to check your own records. So, the past is coming up, right? So, but the past is not just coming up to see like, well, what still sits there. My feeling is that that situations will probably occur for Aries where you normally respond in a specific way. And what the guides are saying to you this week, idle higher, vibrate higher. Maybe the way you respond to situations or have responded to situations is what doesn't solve them, right? So I feel Aries energy is a, is a bit tougher than the energies we have encountered so far, but ultimately it starts with you um, realizing, yeah, I, 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 I am a better version of myself and then take it from there. Now we're going into the next star sign, which is Taurus. We're looking at the week of October the 4th to the 10th, 2021. Now I already mentioned in the overall energy the new moon on the 6th, I'm getting um, the picture of, uh, of the new moon right here. So, Taurians, there are things this week where you are totally in the dark as to what's going on, right? And the way the guides show this to me is you have the Ice Age and you have fun. <laughs> what that means is, when you have ice, it is the element of water. Water is the element of renewal. So, 
while you are in the dark in some instances this week, Torians, this is the time for you to be as calm as you can possibly be. Just relax. This is the main message here for you. May, may you know, relax and rest. And the other thing I'm getting, um, and we talked about this with another star sign when they showed me the spinach, <laughs> is this would be a very good week for Torians to also look into your intake of food and um, go into detoxify. Right? Really, really important. Um, again, I the other day just bought nettle tea. Um, haven't had nettle, nettle tea in, in such a long time. But I bought nettle tea. And that's the image I just saw when we talked about detoxification. Um, so treat yourself to herbal infusions, for instance, right? Allow yourself to really purify yourself as best you can. That's the only job you have this week. Don't worry about, oh, I don't know where we're going, right? As long as you're going, you're going somewhere. And then you have fun as the outgoing energy, which means while you're detoxing and while you can go like, okay, I can't control everything. It's important because oftentimes the word control comes up with Torians a lot because obviously you have the bull, if that makes sense, right? And the reason why Toreans sometimes need that feeling of, if I can control this, um, I feel a bit safer, is simply because in your constellation, you have the planet Aldebaran. And it literally means the follower. And it follows the Pleiadians, which are all in the, 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 um, the constellation of Taurus. Since we are from the Pleiadians, um, and your your planet um the planet that is with your constellation taurus um is following <laughs> the pleiadians your ancestors and always wants to be there you feel a bit lost you are looking for guidance all the time because aldebaran cannot quite catch up because you know the pleiadians is moving itself so in other words, what they're saying to you is, yes, you have a tendency to kind of go like, wow, if I can, again, maybe control is the wrong word, but that's the word I'm hearing. Maybe if I can control this a little, if I have a better handle on this, life is easier. Because we have the full moon, uh, the, sorry, the new moon on the 6th, there's no way you will feel that this week. It's like, whoa, I'm in charge. Don't be in charge. You have fun. It's the outgoing energy. Just detox, relax and have a good time. Let your hair down, right? Awesome. So that was Taurus going to the next star sign, which is Gemini. We have Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo left. This is Gemini. Okay. Um, we have water and materialization. Materialization means things are materializing. You heard this from Star Trek, and then something materializes. It just means that now is the time to really manifest your vision. And because it is materialization, which means it's literally appearing in front of you, whatever you have manifested, whatever you are in the process of manifesting, is really that close. It's, you're on the verge of change, right? We are with Gemini, aren't we? Yeah. So Gemini, you are with you are on the verge of change, but your income, incoming energy is water, which is renewal and in 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 in, in a lot of ways um, purification. So what they're saying to you is while it's important to be always hydrated, obviously, um, water in your case, as the incoming energy is telling you, yes, new things are coming. You're on the verge of change that is important because you asked for it, right? Don't be anxious about any changes you encounter this week, right? I also feel that um, energetically speaking, it's not change. It's never without friction. So it doesn't feel like it's a super smooth ride. And it also doesn't mean that, you know, the changes are really like ting, lining up and they're coming. Um, but this is the way of the universe saying to you, you know, we, we have heard you and we hear you. And the changes you asked for are being 
manifested and they're coming your way and they're very close right and water just means like as you preparing yourself to meet the new version of your future um do it relaxed and restless also interesting because when you look at water because we obviously are water as well therefore water as a as a renewal energy helps us on the cellular level so water is super important right if that makes sense so so for for gemini they can't they can't highlight this enough for you to really you know have tons of water this week detox purify and enjoy the journey new beginnings are coming soon and remember we have a new moon on the 6th which means it is the representation of new beginnings you're right there so don't get impatient right what will happen a lot let's put it this way with gemini or any any time you have a new beginning sometimes you need to put things to rest before new beginnings can really happen and all the guides are saying to you this week gemini don't worry about it don't stress about it it'll happen organically because you are cleansed on a cellular level right that was that that was gemini going to the next star sign which is cancer we have cancer leo and virgo left um here we go cancerians very interesting <laughs> You have gratitude and contemplation. Mm. Let's put it this way. The way I feel the energy of Cancerians at this point in time as I do the reading for Cancerians is not without restlessness, right? But what the guides are saying to you is just meep, stop the press, right? Be grateful for anything and everything you've got and achieved thus far. Practice gratitude. Really, really important. Just look at what you got. Look at how great life is. Don't just focus on, on the negative. Really, really important uh, for Cancerians this week to actually really um, bring gratitude the, or the feeling of I'm, I'm grateful for things. Bring this into your daily life, right? Don't just say it right to 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 appease the gods. Yeah, okay, I'm, you know, I'm quite happy I have this. Right? Really feel it and um, make it part of your life. Just like yeah, I think what 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 would yeah, what would make a big difference for Cancerians, energetically speaking, is for you to actually have a gratitude journal. If you had a gratitude journal, what just a piece of paper if you if if, if you so wish um but you write down three things you're grateful for every single day you will then notice how much in your life actually works and worked which is part of your outgoing energy because your outgoing energy is contemplation so when you are beginning to look at what you got rather than what you haven't got um, and then it's a weird word contemplation it's not a word i actually like because it just feels to me like you know you have to sort of sit here and contemplate quietly it sort of stalks you <laughs> but that's maybe just me because i'm a very impatient man but anyway for cancerians what they're saying to you is while you accept the state or the status of your reality as what it is you automatically also contemplate on how did i get here right so they're not asking you <coughs> to just be grateful and just you know uh, move on or, or or move along with the energy while it is important to move along with the energy the the message for you is to have at least some quiet time um to also let go of that feeling of you know Nothing is really working because that's the point the guides are making. That's not true. It is not true that nothing is working. Right? So, sounds a bit weird, but that's just the way I hear it. If you are a Cancerian and you happen to catch this video this week, you have internet access, right? You have food, right? 
first world problems. So <laughs> that that doesn't mean I didn't mean to um to minimize anything, but it feels to me that should you find this video, for instance, where the Atlantean, the, the guys from Atlantis, whatever, do you have a name? <laughs> the, the guards, the guides of Atlantis, here, the guys I work with this week, um, when you when they come to you here, right, um, and, and you can actually get some guidance from, from the universe, um, be grateful for that too, because you all of a sudden have been drawn to, to, you know, reach out and find some guidance. That's what, that's what I'm doing here. That's what we're here for, is to literally just try to help you along, right? So, there was a Cancerians. Now we have Leo and Virgo left. Let's have a look. So, second last star sign, Leo. You have the Divine Essence and Crystal Skulls. <laughs> so... What that really means, in short, I just have to, it's just a bit weird, um, the energy that's coming in, I just need to figure out how to phrase certain things. Divine essence really means that you are who you are, and because you are who you are, without trying to be someone else, that's your task this week, you know, be 100% who you are. I remember last year I recorded the energy uh, for the whole year and the overall energy or the, the the message for 2021 for all star signs is to be your spiritual self and you have that in abundance uh, Leos this week um, be yourself and also realize how oftentimes how pure your thoughts can be and how innocent you sometimes um, go and explore things which is why you may feel vulnerable, because you, you go there um, oftentimes into situations with absolutely no boundaries and no protection whatsoever. You just trust, like a child would, that now no harm will come to you. And again, you have the divine essence, which means um, there's no word here that there's any harm coming to you. All the guides are saying is, remember that the innocence that you have and the way you see the world, you see the good in people, you also, this is what they give me, you see the good in countries. You could look, you could, you know, watch a documentary and say, oh, is she quite nice? I wonder how the people are in this country, if that makes sense. So I'm, so I'm getting um, that you're quite open and that's something that you are and you should cherish about yourself, right? And then the outgoing energy is the crystal skulls. So the idea was that um, information uh, knowledge was distributed into crystals and we have these crystal skulls um, you know that contain a, a massive amount of knowledge which means that because you have the crystal skull as the outgoing energy there's always stuff that is still unknown so don't look for 150% transparency this week is not going to happen. And remember, we have the, the new moon, the, 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 not, the, the, the not illuminated moon on the 6th, where, you know, no light, 0% illumination, right? Haven't got a notion where I'm going here, <laughs> kind of thing. Except that not knowing what's next, that not knowing the outcome of situations this week is just very normal and part of your journey right so stay innocent go with all your heart wherever it is you're going this week right and trust that the guides got your back okay that was leo going to the very first star sign um very last star sign sorry which is virgo we're looking at the week of october the 4th to the 10th that was a really long video um so um, let me just um, say thank you, uh, not only to you watching, but for these brand new guides um, communicating with me so I can communicate to you, if that makes sense. It's always super exciting to work with new guides. These Atlantean guides are a bit heavy. I feel them. It's like, it's like almost, there's a, you know, when you go, 
lower to the bottom of the of the the sea there's a pressure kind of thing and, and when i work with them i actually literally feel pressure if that makes sense so it is a bit it is a bit tiring which is also probably because it's the first time i work with them um you know because i've been working with my with my spirit guides forever um my animal guides especially uh, forever so that's um a new experience to me so thank you thank you thank you for you know letting me um well somehow getting me towards these these this deck of cards and letting me use it. Virgos, you have cooperation and balance. Get the balance right. Right? So, so what they're saying to you is cooperation means there has to be togetherness. This is the week for Virgos to not do things alone. Not go it alone, not feel, you know, um, you can all bugger off. I don't need anyone. So if there is frustration in Virgo's life, make sure you can reach out to someone, right? Um, maybe you yourself need some guidance, some advice. Um, go find it. That makes sense. Don't despair on your own. Don't despair at all, to be fair. But um, don't just sit there and go like, oh, I need a break, I need a breather. Because what the guides are saying is it, it won't serve you. Being alone with your thoughts won't serve you. So you have cooperation, right? Reach out to others. Listen to what they have to say, right? And cooperate. Cooperation also means that if you have something to say, don't hold back. My feeling with Virgo is that there's a bit of frustration in your energy. And therefore, you're on the cusp of telling people to F off. So that's the energy I've been given. I'm sure that doesn't ring true with all Virgos. But it is important because you have cooperation um, to make sure that you behave uh, and you carry yourself as positively and as best as you can because your outgoing energy is balance. So this is the week as we go through the week with the new moon coming in on the 6th. Really, really important for you to, to find a way to be balanced, if that makes sense, right? Um, yeah, it's important. So that's the main message here uh, on the uh, the outgoing energy is is you know find a balance that you then carry with you into the future. So if you feel a bit lost, the trick is to not be lost on your own, but just say you know let me just reach out. So if you said you know I I'm, I'm you know as a, as a as a Virgo. I'm not feeling well, you know, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to see anyone, la la la. Um, maybe it's a good idea to find a circle, find a development circle, find a, a, a healing circle, you know. Do something with other people, if that makes sense. You know, you go to a yoga class, even if you haven't done yoga before, it's going to be a laugh, have a laugh, right? So what I'm seeing is here, is for you to, to be with others, cooperate with others, to find a balance that will help you to live your life in a in a fuller, richer way, right? So, wow, that was exciting. You know, at least for me it was. <laughs> That's all we got time for. Um, again, thank you so much for the uh, um, Atlantean, you know, the guides from Atlantis that, that worked with me here today. Thank you all for sitting through it with me and I see you all next week. Bye-bye.